Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, let me share my slide first. Is that visible for all of you? Maybe some thumbs up reaction. Anyone, is that visible for all of you? Hello, can you hear me? Like, is that visible? Okay, Julian, you can continue. Okay, okay, okay. So, this session will be mainly focusing, uh, will focus mainly on using AI and co pilots for financial forecasting and planning. Uh, if you have any question, unmute yourself and talk because, like, since this, the slide is on a slideshow, I can't see if you raised your hand or anything. So, like, just feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. So, since I think, like, uh, uh, from yesterday's session and from today's stand up, I hope that you have understood on how to use Copilot and what Copilot is. If you have a question or so, we can go over it but <clears throat> assuming that you ha you have understood what copilot is and how we can use them any ai tools or copilots uh, let's continue with this session and mainly we will see introduction to financial forecasting and planning and the key financial inputs that are already mentioned in your challenge document so like we will define them and you will be able to understand them one by one and then we will also see g ships G sheet functions, and then we will also see understanding AI and copilots, and then we will also see the role of AI in financial forecasting, and we will have a short demo about G sheet functions and how to calculate those key functional inputs using the G sheet formulas, and then we will have a conclusion. So. As an introduction, first we need to understand what financial forecasting means and what financial planning is before, like before going over on how to use AI to to get to get them. So financial forecasting, in short, it's like predicting future financial outcomes based on the data, like costs, sales, and budgets. So uh, an organization, for example. A retail company it can forecast that holiday sales will increase by 15 percent based on past trends and it's uh history like based on past historical data that uh, the company had and uh, like based on the current uh is there anyone who's talking do we have a question from your side Okay, so um, let me continue with the example. And for example, like a retail company, it can forecast that the holiday sales will increase by 15% based on past trends and current market data. So like uh, since they have already a forecasted data that they, uh, that company will increase its sale by 15%, they will adjust their inventory accordingly and ensure that they have all the enough stock to meet that demand. So like if they didn't forecast or if they don't have that forecasted data, they might not be able to meet the market. So this is financial forecasting and about financial planning. It's preparing strategies on how to manage finances to so that like a company can achieve uh, its own business goals or objectives. So, for example, like uh, a startup. Let's assume that a startup it creates a financial plan so that it will allocate twenty percent of its revenue toward this marketing. Like we will define what revenue means literally. But <laughs> it's a total like uh, it's a revenue to artist marketing and fifty percent to product development and the rest of it's to option operational costs. So like it will help uh, this having a financial plan. It will help them to prioritize their spending to achieve like their targeted uh, business goals or uh, their growth like the, the growth that they are planning to have within the next. Uh, times so the importance of having financial forecasting and financial planning is to <clears throat> to have to make uh, this to have like a good decision making and also resource allocation and preparing for uncertainties or if there is any risk 
you might be able to uh, pass like the risk even though uh, like uh, without any resource limit or without any resource deficiency you might be able to overcome the risk also if you have a financial plan and financial forecasting so we will come to the key financial inputs the first one is a minimum order quantity so minimum order quantity it's a, a smallest number of products that you can order from a manufacturer or supplier at one time so like minimum order quantity is the smallest number of products that you can order from supplier at just one time and here comes the, the second term which is cost per unit so this is how much it costs for one unit of a product so it it includes all the expenses that pro, that specific product would have for example like it might be related to materials manufacturing and assembly so uh, like knowing this also will help you to figure out uh, your total production expenses and decide on the price that you will sell uh, how much uh, are you going to sell this product for so the next one is shipping costs so coming to shipping costs it means uh, the cost that you are going to <clears throat> the costs that are that you are going to invest in order to move goods from one place to another place for business for business also it might be like transporting products it's uh, actually the same concept it might also be from the manufacturer to a warehouse or directly to customers and the next one is there is a noise i think yeah iman can you unmute yourself or if you have a question you can raise it okay so if it's not a question we can proceed so uh shipping costs we have said that it's uh, a cost that you are going to invest in order to transport your goods or your products so and then it might also depend on the method of the transportation. For example, it might be air, which is a plane, and sea. So your cost might be might depend on the distance, weight, and uh, the transportation methods that you are going to use. So the next one is customs clearance. This is a fee that's paid when goods are shipped internationally. So like every country has rules of importing goods and customs clearance uh, clearance ensures that products are legally brought in in tax it's it's, it's like a tasks or duties that are paid for a certain product so the next one is sale price per unit so this is the price at which you are going to sell each product to uh, for your customers so it should cover your costs that you are going to Good for in order to bring that product or to manufacture that product. So, and also it should also include your profit margin. So, like sale price is, uh, it all it includes both the manufacturing, uh, both the manufacturing costs for a product and also your profit together. So, having a sale price is uh, essential because you can stay competitive and profitable in your market space so having it is a crucial one coming to marketing budget estimate it's also one of the key inputs in the financial uh, space so marketing budget estimate it's a total amount of money that you are going to uh, input for your uh, so that you like uh, so that your mar your product is going to be known or any like promote uh, it's about promoting your product or service so it includes things like ads uh, social media campaigns with website design if you have a website in other ways so that you can you can attract your clients so a well planned marketing budget it ensures that you you can reach like the estimated uh, audience and also you can have a less uh, less out a less like a less uh, income a less outcome of the like a less outcome that you are going to invest on it so the next one is courting costs the first one is ceo salary uh, 
for startups, we don't have CEO salary because the CEO itself is going to also input, uh, he's uh, going to in invest on the startup. So like uh, basically CEO salary, it's a sal salary that's paid to the chief executive of officer, which is the CEO. So like who runs the company, for example, in startups, as I have already said, they are going to uh, like the CEO might not have a salary since they are going to invest. And the next one is fractional CFO. Uh, it's a part-time CFO who helps manage a company's finance. So like hiring a fractional CFO, it allows your business to get financial expertise without high cost of uh, full-time CF CFO. So like it's just a salary that you are going to pay for your team. Uh, for example, if it's some tech company, it might include a developer's team. So you are also expected to pay them salary. So this is also core uh, part of core team costs. And if you have any like uh, marketing team, every like uh, any team, there are any any staff members that are working inside your company, it's going to be included in the core team costs. So legal and financial costs uh, these are one-time costs for setting up your uh, business and ensuring it it, comp it compiles with the laws of that uh, with the laws of that specific country uh, so that like uh, it includes registering the business paying for legal advice and hiring accountants so it's an important part of the business startup project uh, process so that you can avoid any legal issues afterward while you are working in your company. So this will be the last one. So this is a sales and operational costs. The first one is cost of goods sold. So this is uh, cost of goods sold. It will uh, contain the total cost of making and selling products. And, uh, and then like we have shipping and delivery costs it includes expenses expenses for shipping orders and delivering it to customers and then returns it's optional like you might not be, you might not include it uh, all often so returns it's a cost related to handling returned items for example like if there's no returned item in one company they might not have returns but uh returns it's uh, about the costs that are the costs that are related to the returned items of a company so the next one is credit card processing fees so this is related to um transaction fee or a small fee that's charged for credit card payments so it's related to the transaction fee for example if one credit card is uh, if you if you wanted to we know like from in the like from just one scenario if you wanted to transfer from one bank account to another you might you have a transaction fee so like it's uh, the same as this one so next we will see a g-sheet functions so like in order to be able to work with g-sheets you need to uh, you need to be able to understand functions so Functions, they are pre-written formulas that perform specific calculations or manipulations on data. Um, specifically, G-sheet functions, they accept arguments or inputs, and then they will uh, just return a result or the output. So the syntax is always, uh, you need to make sure that you, you need to make sure that you have started with equal sign, which is over here and then you will write the function name and then you will uh, open a bracket and then include all the arguments as an input for this specific function we will see an example of the digit functions so we have a lot of them for example if you wanted to add a values for within different range of sales you are going to use sum so like uh, you can see over here the example equal sign and then sum and then like there's a bracket from a1 to 18 so this function will return us the sum of the output from a1 to 18 so like it will just return us the sum of the data from a1 to 18 so we also have average which calculates average of a set of numbers for example like we have equal sign average b2 to b12 
So it will uh, the same as the sum. It will return us the average of the data that exists between B2 and B12. So the risk goes on the same way. For example, the mean and the max, it will return us the minimum element from C1 to C5. And then the maximum one, it's the same way, like it will return us the maximum element that exists between D3 and to D15. And then round, um, yeah, it's a little bit different. In round, we have equal sign in the round and uh, we have the sales that we wanted to round. For example, for this case, it exists on E8. E so, and then we we will include the decimal points that we wanted to round it to. Uh, so, for this case, it's two. So, we will just include two. If we wanted to round it to three, we can also include three. It's a decimal point after the point. Uh, it's like specifically, it's uh, it's this two it's like uh, it shows the decimal uh, point and then the numbers that we are going to have after the decimal point so if we if, if we for example we included e8 and then four the result would be that for example like we will see it on digit that uh, this number that's uh, uh, like besides the data shows us a uh, how, how much numbers that we are going to have after the decimal point. So we have also the power function. Uh, for like in the power function, it's also a, a little bit different. We have a call sign and then the power, which is the name of the function. And then we have bracket and then base and component, well, base and exponent. So this is uh, digit functions. Like uh, if you have any question, you can raise it. You can unmute yourself and talk, we, and we can discuss further. And for the time being, like, we will go to understanding AI and Copilot. So uh, before, before like, using AI or Copilot, we need to understand what AI is and Copilot. This is just a short overview. So AI, it's a tool that helps us in and as that one of the advantage of AI is AI is to analyze data and predict future financial trends. And then Copilot, we can use it, like Copilot is basically an AI powered assistant, which helps us to automate tasks, provide insight and support this decision making, for, specifically for this case in financial forecasting. And uh, within a lot of different scenarios also, Copilot can be an assistant. So, we will also see the role of AI in financial forecasting. So the key benefits of uh, AI is for uh, the first one would be enhanced accuracy. So uh, since we have AI algorithms which process a lot of uh, chunk data sets, uh, it, will, it will help us to detect complex complex patterns and it will help us also to, to predict the future outcomes with with an limited time and then uh with a quick response also so like the next one is real-time insights it's a tool like financial copilots it will help it will enable a quicker decision making uh like after you give the copilot a real-time data you can get the future prediction or the insights uh or like a lot of different uh forecasting is related to anything for, uh, but for this specific uh, scenario, we will use it with a financial. So like you can get that insights or decision-making related to your own data. So the last one would be efficiency. We have a lot of different benefits, but these are just the main one in that we are going to apply them for our specific tasks. So efficiency, it's, it automates routine tasks, freeing up analysts to focus on strategic planning. Okay, so as a conclusion of our all financial forecasting, it helps business plan ahead and make better. It will help us to make a better decision so that we can uh, get, we can align with our strategies and our actions. They can align with the business goal of our company. And then AI and copilots, they are valuable tools to automate and improve accuracy in financial planning. For example, like, uh, 
we humans might get confused or we might create an error while, while working with a large data sets and the complex patterns but uh, AI if you fit them like the real existing data sets they would work uh, clearly and uh, with a higher accuracy rather than humans with an and also with an limited quick time so Understanding the key costs in inputs, it's also crucial for successful forecasting. So um, we need, like you need to be able to understand this key input so that you might work your tasks accordingly also. So this is a link uh, for a demo. We will continue with the demo, but like if any one of you has any question, you can ask it. Do we have any question about maybe the digit functions or the key inputs? If there is, is there anything that's not clear? Yeah, Bikila, I know that Copilot is an AI assistant tool by itself, but it's a chatbot. So we have a demo session, by the way, like it's not the end of the session, but uh, yeah okay okay is that an answer for Lillian yeah uh, copilot is one of the AI tools that we have and we have a lot of different AI tools Gemini Ether ChatGPT Ether and also we have a lot of different of them uh, Fromsa do you want to say something Fromsa I get my answer I get my answer Okay, so I will just do, yeah, I will share you the slide so you will be able to access the link for the g -shoot. I'm going to be working with the g -shoot for the demo. So let's continue to that. I hope you're able to see my screen. So this is just uh, over an overview of all the, uh, or the financial inputs that were discussed in the session so revenue we have discussed about revenue sale price sale price per unit credit card fee and a lot of them do we have any question from some maybe yeah so so like uh we will assume that we have given uh, for initial sales, we have 200 units, and then this is the amount of the units that we have, and then the sale price per unit is 200. So the total revenue is calculated as uh, it's like the multiplication between the number, the amounts of the units that we have, and then the sale per the, the sale price per unit. So it's 200 times 200. So like just to make it clear, I'm going to type it again. So first, uh, as we have already discussed, you need to start with equal sign while you are writing any type of uh, G-sheet function. So, and then you will go and select the specific sales that you wanted to be calculated. So I will select this one and then I will put the sign, which is multiplication. And also I will select this one. So. I, if I clicked enter, it will just give me the multiplication of the two rows B3 and C3. So this is also calculated the same way as before. So like uh, for the total revenue, we are going to we are going to multiply these two elements, and then we are going to go with the credit card fees. So the credit card fee per percent is four percent it's like for this case it's a fixed one and then we have the revenue which is calculated over here so we are going to calculate the credit card fee for each revenue if we have 200 units or 500 units of product for in our company so for this case also we are going to use the same way as before but uh, for this case, it's just a little bit different because we have a constant a fixed amount over here. So like we are going to multiply. Again, let me write it again. We have equal sign, which is 
a beginning of uh, a starting of every Google Sheet function. And I will, I'm going to click this one. And then I'm going to click multiplication and then 0 0.04, which is a percentage of this one. So if I say, it, uh, if I clicked return, enter, it will just give me the result. So this is also calculated the same way, which is which is this one, B8, and then, yeah, D4 and B8 is the same. So that's why, like, you can either use B8 or D, D4, yeah. So it's going to be calculated the same way as before, and then we are going to calculate our total cost. Yes, here we have our total cost, which is like units, uh, the like uh, the unit the number of units that we have and then the cost per unit so we are going to multiply both of them which is 15 times 200 and the result is 300 3, uh, and then the next one is also the same as this one which is 500 times 15 so which is 7500 and then these costs are, as you have, as you can see, they are fixed. So we have seen what shipping and customs means, marketing costs, marketing budget estimate, what are those in the slides. So you can go and check that one. If there's anything, if there's anything unclear, you can also ask it over here. So this is, this, these three terms, they are, fix it and it's given over here. So we are going to calculate profit loss calculation. First, we will calculate the total costs and then we are going to calculate profit profit, profit or loss cal calculation for each unit. The first one, which is 200 for the total costs, we are going to include, yeah, as you can see over here, it's like, so it, since it's for the 200 units, we are going to include the production cost of the 200 units, which is D11. Yeah, we have D11 over here. And then the next one is D13, which is shipping in customs. It's, it, it's fixed, like it's not based on the number of units that we have. So it's D13, D14, and D15. So like it will give us the total costs that we are going to invest for this unit, for the 200 units of products. And then the next one, we have uh, the total costs that we are going to invest on the production of the 500 units. So the production cost is $7,500. It's everything is in dollar. I have already mentioned it over here. So uh, seven, $1,500 over here, and then the shipping and customs is fixed, which is $900 and $30,000 we have also for the marketing costs, and then the team and legal costs, it is $9,600. So we uh, this way we can calculate the total costs. We are just going to add these four terms together, and for the profit loss, we are going to we are going to we are going to like uh, we are going to subtract from the total revenue the credit card fee and then also the total costs so we will get the profit if we get a profit or if we get a loss we are, we can understand this from this calculation so over here we have like uh, minus 5 5100 loss over here for the 200 units and then we have like $48,000 of a profit for the next 500 units. So this is just all about how to calculate the total costs in the profit loss for a specific units of your uh, product. So like you, for your challenge in the challenge document, it's included for you to calculate the total costs in the profit and loss. And also, you have uh, three questions to make to make an analysis over over the the outcomes that you get from this from this uh, output. So, like uh, I have over here, which is Microsoft's 
Microsoft, it's also Microsoft Copilot, but it's not in the Microsoft Edge. So for example, like, I can't say just, I can, I can just give it the total costs and profit or loss and just ask the AI to do analysis based on this one. So I think like this is one of your question state how much funding is required to sustain operations based on your profit or loss calculation. So since I have already given it the data, uh, it's going to give me some suggestions. So like uh, it says to sustain operation without incurring losses at the initial sales level, which is 200 units, you would need at least $5,100 in additional funding as you can see we have a loss of five thousand one hundred dollar over here so like it's uh, recommending to have five at least a minimum of five hundred five thousand and one hundred dollar so this amount would cover the shortfall and ensure that all costs are made and then uh it will it also suggests this on additional costs so like the main thing is you're expected to do the to calculate all the total costs, profit or loss, total revenue, or all the like, all the financial key inputs that you you are going to need in order to do your analysis, and then you are going to give all the all, all the calculated or the the results that you came from the from your calculation, and then you are going to ask any items that you are using. It might be Gemini or Not Notebook LM or uh, Copilot. You are going to ask ask it so that you can get uh the, you can get your question answered so this is this is it's all about the session if you have any question so you can ask do you have any question so far Do you have any question, guys? Like, is there anything that's not clear, or are you confused on how to use G sheet functions? Like, if you are not able to, if you are, if you didn't understand the concept of on how to use G sheet function, you are not going to be able to do the calculation. So it's better to raise it over here if you have any question. so you can you can also say that it's clear and we understood anyone who can break the silence over here okay 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 i'm not thank you so if if we don't have any question, I will make sure to share you the slide in the Google Sheets by any case if you need it. So I'll share it on the Slack and also it's also available on the drive of that all the tutorial contents are available over there if you need anything. So you can also ask any question on Slack if you want. So just let's wrap up the session. Yeah, I will also Make sure to share the Google Sheet also. You can check on that, on how to use those functions so that you can get your result. So if you don't if you don't have any question, let's show a reaction that you all of you understood the content. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the recording.